this is one of my favourite um, Wii analyses that pulls in outlier classification, um, the normal distribution, also the binomial distribution. So we start with um, choosing randomly um, a mean and standard deviation for our um, for a normal distribution. So these literally can be any values you like. Uh, so I just pick two numbers out of thin air. Um, the lower quartile for a normal distribution, so um, the normal distribution here for the random variable x with this mean, this standard deviation is found using the function norm.inv. Um, probability for the lower quartile is 0.25. The mean there, the standard deviation here, and I want to lock those cell references in, so I'll, I'll put dollars. Um, the upper quartile, if I start with that formula, um, I'll change that to 0.75 to give me the upper quartile. So the lower quartile and upper quartile for that random variable. Interquartile range is just the difference between the two. And um, so there I've established lower quartile, upper quartile and interquartile range. Um, and these all depend on, on mu and sigma. Okay, so, um, or at least lower quartile and upper quartile depend on, on mu. Interquartile range just depends on sigma. The outlier thresholds Uh, if we think back, lower quartile minus one and a half times the interquartile range, and the upper threshold, upper quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range. Uh, so those are the outlier th thresholds. So I can calculate that. Lower quartile minus one and a half times the interquartile range, and the upper. The upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Now for the probability that I select an outlier from the normal distribution. So here, um, if I use norm.dist and point at the lower threshold, and at the mean and standard deviation of this distribution for normal probability cumulative is always true and then the probability of an outlier is um, 0 0.03 I've just worked out that one because the normal curve is symmetric I need to multiply this by 2 Actually, let me, let me leave that and I'll just, if I was to work out the upper, uh, 1 minus norm.dist, pointing at the upper threshold, mu sigma, and then probability equals true, I get exactly the same value. Okay, so don't actually need the upper threshold uh, because the curve is symmetric. And what I'll do instead is just put 2 times um, two times that. So the probability of selecting an outlier in a normal sample, uh, sorry, in a if probability that a randomly selected observation from X is an outlier is um, given by this. Now the cool bit, if I change this um, these numbers while the pro the quartiles interquartile range, the upper and lower thresholds change, um, the probability of selecting an outlier doesn't change at all. Um, so they're all exactly the same and completely independent of um, the parameters of the normal distribution. 
Right. Um, now, let me suppose um, I have a sample of size n. And let y be the number of outliers. Then y is going to be binomial with number of trials n and probability of success given by the probability of that outlier. So here I'm going to have um, n, my sample size, um, from starting from 1 and um, let me focus on in the in the binomial um, I want to know what is the probability that y is greater than or equal to 1 which is 1 minus the probability that y equals 0 so what's the probability in a sample of size n that I have at least one outlier So I use the function binom dot dist number of successes zero number of trials I'll point at this parameter n probability of success I'll point at the probability of outlier and cumulative is false and I want to lock in that probability. So lo and behold, probability of at least one outlier in a sample of one is just the, the same. And if I copy that down, um, the probability of at least one outlier goes up. And we can see that as, as the sample size increases, um, this, this probability goes up. Um, we can also calculate as a function of n the expected value of y. What is the expected number of outliers? And this is going to be n times p, um, the probability of um, each observation being an outlier. And we can copy that down as well. And that thing grows. Um, grows linearly within, whereas the other um, function, what's going on here, ah, I forgot to lock in prob probability, so let me do that again. Okay, I've copied those um, formulas down a bit, but let's look at a um, a graph, um, so selecting the probability of at least one outlier, and then let's look at a 2D line graph, and here's the, the function. So as we increase n, um, sample size given down here, um, the probability of having at least one out, outlier grows towards um, towards 1. Where we had about a 50% probability, um, it's around about a sample of size zero, uh, sorry, size 100, that we have at least one outlier. Um, we can scroll. It's a terrible way of doing it, but um, somewhere in about 100 observations, there's a 50% chance that we've got at least one out outlier. But in, in any small sample, um, so samples of, of 30 or fewer, there's actually not a great chance of, of there being um, a an outlier. Um, of course this expected value of y series, um, this is just linear n times p. Um, so it's just a straight line. Um, the expected number of outliers, um, you know, not many um, as n grows. Um, even a sample of 400 or something, we'd expect um, only three outliers um, if those observations are drawn from a normal. Um, 
let me just do one more thing again um, just reminding that this doesn't depend on um, the parameters of that normal distribution um, so go and check out the graph again exactly the same as it was before so completely independent of the 